Yep, that's me. Now, you're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, it all started on July 19th, where I had a seizure in the middle of my living room. Yeah, so you read the title right. I had four seizures in the span of three hours on July 19th and ended up getting hospitalized for a week. But that's too broad and never really gets into the meat of the whole situation. So let's go way back to the night of July 14th. It was the middle of summer vacation and I was chilling in my home in California. I had recently gotten back from a college tour around CalArts because I've reached that unfortunate point in my life where college has become a priority. I'm almost out of high school and now I gotta start thinking about my future career or whatever. Anywho, I was chilling in my room, minding my own diddly damn business when I began getting a fever and a sore throat. Now, at this point, we all know that a sore throat and a headache is something we all have probably experienced. We've all gotten sick, and if you're saying that you've never felt this kind of pain, you're very clearly a liar or I have reason to believe you aren't human. Back to the story at hand, I didn't mind this pain at all and thought it would go away within a few days time, but as we could probably guess from this point, I was far from wrong. The following day, I was diagnosed with COVID. That's pretty self-explanatory. And spoiler alert, all hell breaks loose from here. So something not a lot of people know is that in February of this year, I was diagnosed with IBS and dealt with it really bad for about two weeks. Yeah, my inner M&M finally got the best of me. But I'm assuming most if not all of you have never had to deal with the sin that is IBS. And if you haven't, I genuinely want you to know how lucky you are because irritable bowel syndrome should be listed as one of the worst pains to ever exist. Let me put it this way. Imagine your colon, it's just chillin', minding its own business, when all of a sudden some degenerate comes in and grabs your colon and proceeds to twist it and turn it. Now imagine having that pain for about two weeks where you wake up at 1 a.m. to take four hot showers before six and aren't able to use the bathroom at all. With that, you have the prime IBS experience. Now you're probably asking, Oh, Lo-Fi, this video is about those godforbidden weeks in July. What does IBS have to do with any of this? And to that I say, Jimbo, shut the hell up and let me finish talking, you soggy piece of shit. So some time after I'd been diagnosed with COVID, I began feeling an incredibly familiar stomach pain and I immediately began believing that IBS had finally come back to bite me in the ass. Thankfully, my mother remembered to bring back some medication that I took during my original attack back in February. But despite me taking the medications as I was supposed to, it never worked. So for the next 96 hours, I was incapable of getting any sleep, I was lightheaded on a nearly daily basis, and some of the only relief I could gift myself with was forcing myself to vomit. It was a constant state of agony and I was probably convinced I was dying. All I could feel was pain and despite all my attempts, nothing could work until the forbidden day of July 19th came. So for most of the day, I was still sticking with the routine I had been dealing with for the past four days or so. No sleep, barely eating, the forces of nature grabbing onto my colon and squeezing it like it was a squeaky toy, and the only relief coming from hot showers, vomiting, and really shitty yoga. Later that day, I was finally able to use the restroom after being constipated for the last four days. And after using the restroom, I finally thought things were going to get better. But as we could guess at this point, say it with me kids, it all goes to shit from here. So I was resting on the couch feeling like I had just been at the Beyond section of Bed Bath & Beyond. I was tired and I had a weird pounding sensation on the right side of my head. The strangest thing, however, was because my eyes had developed a mind of their own and began moving on different directions without me controlling them. This was confusing my mother and it was certainly confusing me too. So I was resting on the living room couch while my mother went to the nearby kitchen for... something. What she needed to get, I'm not sure. But thankfully, our kitchen is connected to the living room so she could see me perfectly fine. So as I sat there in continuous agony, I tried to allow my body to relax so I could hopefully get some relief in a healthy way. But then, the unthinkable happened. I had a seizure right there on the couch. According to my parents, my seizures lasted for about three minutes or so, but for me, it felt like nothing. As I was resting on my couch, I felt my body stiffening and my jaw unhinging as my eyes began to close. At this moment, I had gone unconscious. No clue as to what the hell just happened to me. I vividly remember that sometime after the first seizure, I had gained consciousness for a very short amount of time. I had no idea what was going on at the time other than there were two paramedics in our living room. Now. I need to mention that I was very delusional during this period. I had just woken up from being unconscious after a seizure and I had no idea what was going on. All I remember were the two paramedics in our living room. One of said paramedics was a tall lanky guy who looked like Vsauce Michael if Vsauce Michael had no glasses and was completely bald. Maybe if his head was a bit longer too. The dude was all up in my face and was probably tasked with getting my partially unconscious ass off the couch. He had informed me that I had just had a seizure and after subconsciously responding to what I just heard, I blacked out again. Next time I woke 
woke up, I was in my bed in the ICU. Now, before I go on with this story, I must restate that I had four seizures. This was the story of just one of them. I had the seizure at around 5 p.m., so there was a lot of time in between when I went unconscious for the second time and when I woke up in the ICU. So what exactly happened? Let me tell you as quick as possible. Paramedics took me to the ER. ER staff were utter sacks of dog shit and told us to wait in the waiting room. In the waiting room, I had another seizure. And after that other seizure is when they finally let me into the ER. That makes two seizures at this point if you're keeping count. In the ER, I had my third seizure very, very quick before the doctors could give me sodium and other fluids I needed. My sodium was at 110, which is really low. And after being hooked onto the fluids, I had my fourth and final seizure simply because of how insanely low my sodium was. I spent some time in that ER before being transferred to the hospital where I would gain consciousness again. Waking up was such a strange experience. I went through an insane life-changing event and I wasn't even awake to witness it. And the only evidence I have of it ever happening was a week spent in the hospital and a rubber tube stuck in my arm. More on that later. I was still undergoing treatment when I woke up, so I wasn't able to have anything to eat. So there I sat, my tired ass munching on some ice chips and family guy playing on the TV. Thankfully, it wasn't long till I was given the all clear to finally eat proper food. So I got some hospital food, which Okay. I know when it comes to stuff like hospital food, plain food, prison food, etc, etc, people usually have this stigma that this kind of food is on the same level as your sick dog's worm-infested diarrhea. But damn it, when I tell you this is some of the best damn hospital food I've ever eaten, I'm spitting straight up fact. It felt like Gordon Ramsay intricately handcrafted every little part of this meal to make it the best damn hospital dish it could possibly be. I spent about a couple of days in the ICU, mainly getting taken out for MRI scans here and there. It wasn't long until I was transferred to a regular hospital room. Though those days in the hospital room were mainly uneventful. I doodled, talked with friends, ate food, watched Ratatouille four separate times. You know, the usual. All was going dandy until one of my doctors had come by to inform us that I was going to be transferred to a hospital outside of the city to continue with further treatment since they couldn't really complete my treatment in this current facility. So after a long, tiring, crueling wait, I was thrown into an ambulance and transferred to a hospital all the way in Madeira. To clarify, I was in Bakersfield this entire time. So the ride in that ambulance was about two and a half hours, which is... Probably not the best for those with claustrophobia. The ambulance was pretty small. I don't really mind most compact spaces, but for some people, I feel like the space could get a little nerve wracking for them. But hey, I don't care about all that. I got a stuffed dog during that experience. I named him Bofo. Thanks for the name idea, 8-Bit. I spent about five days in that next hospital. The routine was pretty repetitive. Wake up, eat breakfast, talk with doctors, draw, talk with friends, watch TLC, talk with more doctors, eat, go to sleep. Sometimes I would get some blood drawn or given some medication through something called a pick line. A pick line is like an IV drip, but it's not a needle. It's a long, thin tube of rubber that goes into your arm and you can use it to either give medicine or take blood. Sounds pretty standard, right? Wrong. This hell noodle is stuck into your arm and it goes all the way to the outside of your heart. You heard that right. This rubber noodle from hell traveled all the way to the outside of my heart. And upon hearing this, I was uncomfortable every second of every damn day. Thankfully, the day I was discharged, they removed it, which was the most uncomfortable medical procedure I have ever been through. And I had a surgery wound that reopened one time, damn it. When the doctor was removing the line, I shit you not, it felt like a thin worm moving through my chest. I hated it. It was physically weird and every way humanly possible, but getting that thing removed was a massive relief. I no longer had a worm in my chest and I could move my arm more freely. You wanna know the best part of all this? they let me keep it. That's right, folks. My doctors gave me the all clear to bring my pick line back home with me. I shit you not. I have it in a bag in one of the drawers in my bedside table. Here it is for proof, chilling in a hazardous material plastic bag. This thing has seen my heart. So finally, after a week's worth of time spent in the hospital, my doctors finally allowed me to go home. That wasn't without me getting a fever at 4 a.m. on my discharge day, though, thus leaving my doctors worried if I should even be allowed to go home at all. Thankfully, my fever went away relatively fast and did and come back, so I was finally allowed to get dressed and go home. A week spent of recovery in a hospital didn't come without its side effects, however. For about two weeks, walking was a major challenge. I couldn't go five minutes without feeling uneasy and out of breath. I mean, I didn't state this earlier, but we found out I was anemic the day after I got discharged, so that kind of explains the fatigue. The thing that made this all worse, however, is that my boyfriend and I had made plans to meet up, but due to me getting tired extremely fast, we had to hold those plans off until the winter. But yeah, that's basically the whole story. It's been about two months since I was discharged, and it's safe to say that I'm doing a lot better. It's a weird yet scary experience, but honestly, I got one hell of a story out of this. So next time I'm at a party or a get-together or something, I can go up to a complete stranger all like, hey, wanna hear the story of that time I had a seizure? But in all seriousness, thank you for watching. I honestly miss doing commentary like this. The only reason I haven't been doing it that much as of lately is a simple answer. I'm lazy. But 
That's it for today. Remember to drink some water. I'm Lo-Fi, the possum in your dumpster, and I'll see you on the flip side.